Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp. Your co-host, Rich Gear here, and we have a guest with us, Doug. This is Derek Marshall. Yes. And uh, Derek is a, Thank you. A, a man after my own heart because uh, he uh, is an engineer, he's a chemist, he's uh, uh, taken a lot of physics, and uh, uh, he's sort of like uh, me in a way. I, uh, my first love in, in the sciences was, was chemistry. And, uh, you know, I uh, have always uh, been fascinated with uh, the periodic table of the elements. We, we see, um, we see that demonstrated whenever we uh, uh, go into our uh, science classrooms. You know, Full disclosure here, there, I think these guys are in conspiracy to shut me up because chemistry is my worst subject, <laughs> okay? So, you know, since I do all the talking, so I'm going to probably uh, try not to do a lot today. Well, yeah, the only thing I there. hated about chemistry was trying to balance the equations, you know. That, that was a little bit of a... a trying task. to remember all the notations and whatnot. That right. was, you know, you learn all the mathematical notations to do equations and you have to learn a whole new system with chemistry. <coughs> That's what annoyed me a lot of the time. Oh, yeah. I was stubborn enough to keep with it, stick with it, and get through a few chem courses. The, the love I have for the periodic table, though, is that uh, uh, each of the elements uh, of, that make up life and make up uh, uh, everything that, that uh, we see in nature, they all have little personalities, if you know, know what I mean. They have, uh, you know, they sure. have a substance uh, uh, that's unique to them, uh, all, the, all their own. And, uh, the reason that Derek is on our show t tonight is because uh, he, he uh, is going to demonstrate some of the mathematical principles that he's discovered from the scriptures and uh, from his study of science and engineering of um, you know, how the elements actually demonstrate the, what the Bible talks about. It's kind of and interesting because that is a biblical concept. From the, I mean, Paul talks about creation testifies that you can get that's you right. can actually find God through his, through his creation we're not talking about a 66 book of the Bible but we're saying in his creation you can see it and you're going into it at more of the, yes. the even deeper levels where and you know most people when you see that scripture you think about trees and the bushes and the yeah. stars and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff you're going into it like wow into the into the elements yeah here, you as know? a numbers guy I've always been fascinated ever since I was a little boy with numbers fascinated with math and science love math and science and uh, my faith in God has always led me to try to apply that to the Bible because the Bible has a lot of numerical information in it. It's true. It's, it's all through the Bible from A to Z, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. You have numbers and, and dates and times and stuff. And I'm not talking about magic numbers or codes or anything like that. I'm just talking about factual numbers, how many were or how long it took and that type of thing. But did you know that the, the periodic table the way it's laid out, series by series, line by line, actually con concurs with the creation story. That is the that creation way. story, with its seven days, it's it's very obvious and funny that the, the periodic table has seven series or seven periods of of its end. each of these lines on the, on this uh, periodic table. There's seven of these lines across, and those are called periods. Periods, and then this way you have groups. Now, what, like Doug was saying, if this series of elements share the same group, they all have the same personalities. So it's a very orderly table. Oh. And if you go line by line, especially in the first three or four lines of the periodic table, you can follow along in the creation story, and it, it, uh, the, the two stories kind of match up. For instance, the first yeah. line on this periodic table is the element hydrogen and helium. Well, we know from science that light comes from the sun, and the way the sun makes light is through the, uh, the, the, uh, the fission and fusion that happens between these two elements. And yeah. so that creates, so that concurs. The first day of the creation story was, let, let, there, be let there be light, right? Let there be light, yep. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's day one, and we can continue on and on. Day two, we're talking about the creation of the firmament, of the air that we breathe. Guess what type of elements are on on uh, period two? Oh, here? We have nitrogen, oxygen. You have yep, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, which is that's what our atmosphere, that's what the air we breathe is made up of. Oh, well, lithium, beryllium don't, don't quite fit, but uh, uh, I do like the uh, uh, left-hand uh, part of the periodic chart as well as the right-hand part. The left-hand. Uh, uh, contains some of the most reactive elements. 
but the right hand part that contains the noble gases. And yeah, why are they called noble gases? <clears throat> it's because they're sort of standoffish. They don't want to react with anything. Right. Oh, is that what they're? They're full. Oh, they're, they're snooty like they royalty, have, huh? That's right. Okay. Yeah. They have everything they need. They have their whole, all their eight valence electrons around them. That's all that they can have. That's all they need, and they don't need to they get don't need anybody else. They don't need anything okay. else. They've got their little group, their little entourage with them, <laughs> so they don't. They're not looking for any employees. They're not trying to get rid of anybody. They're just happy the way they are. Okay. And, and uh, you know, the metals, uh, the alkali metals, which are over on the right-hand side, they they like to uh, give off electrons. Yeah. Uh, they, that's what the, they're famous for. And the uh, alkaline earth metals, the ones right next to them, they give off two electrons. Yep. But um, because the second electron is held in a little bit more tightly, uh, they aren't quite as reactive as the uh, alkali metals. But then you have the, these uh, uh, halogens, the, the, and the, fluorine. The, 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 uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and the stadine. <coughs> and uh, those are the ones that are, they, they will suck in the electrons. Highly electronegative. And, and so what happens with that is that uh, they will, they'll gain an electron uh, and uh, the uh, the metal will lose an electron, and you'll have two then two stable ions, and they attract to each other, and they form a uh, like uh, sodium is the uh, alkali metal, and chlorine is the uh, yeah. the uh, the halogen, and they come together, and two uh, reactive elements forms a, a stable. Bond. Compound. Yeah, and that's the genius of how God has laid out the periodic table. He can use each of these elements like in a toolbox. If he wants to make a substance, <coughs> he takes a little bit of uh, your halogen, it takes a little bit of your uh, alkali metal, puts them together, and you have a brand new uh, substance that has its own personality and its own function and use. You know, so you can look at the periodic table like uh, I believe God does as a toolbox. Mm -hmm. He's created a toolbox for him to make. Of course, he made the tools in the first he place. He made the tools and he made the toolbox and he puts them together to form. Um, for example, did you know that in the third on the third day, that's when we started creating, when God began creating earth. And guess what the third period of the periodic table was full of? Stable earth elements. All the that's abundant right. earth elements. It's full. It's chock full of them. Earth was created on the third day. What's in the third period of the periodic table? All of it. iron, you know, all of your all of your uh, copper, zinc, everything is super abundant in the, in the uh, crust of the earth. That's what's on the third and period. And then, of course, uh, one of the most fascinating uh, uh, compounds that's uh, on the earth is, is that of water. And uh, you can write thick textbooks on the chemistry of water alone because uh, it, it is such a a fascinating substance. Well, water is in that's made up of hydro. I mean, uh, uh, hydrogen and oxygen. So they're right. they're in the other aren't they in the other period there? Yeah, they're uh, yet they're, they're in the, the first one, period. They're on the sort of opposite ends, but the the, the oxygen uh, uh, will suck in uh, two electrons, and the, the hydrogen will give off one. So I always find I, I find it fascinating that two two very reactive or if you will unstable gases, hydrogen and oxygen, flammable. When you put them together, they become what well, I mean something that's just very, very. I, that fascinates me, you know. And the the chemistry of water is such that, and the, the fact that it's found as a liquid uh, for the most uh, uh, and at room temperature, you know, uh, that. Uh, but uh, when uh, when it freezes, it uh, actually behaves a lot different than most other substances. When it freezes, it actually um, becomes. I think the densest at uh, uh, four Celsius. Four Celsius, and so when it uh, actually uh, freezes, it will uh, uh, expand a little bit and yes. float on top. It becomes less dense. The and colder it gets, usually it the it gets becomes more, more dense. dense yeah. The colder it gets, water has a little curve, a little loop that once it hits four Celsius, gets colder three Celsius, it begins to get lighter and lighter. So that's why a lake freezes, <laughs> instead of freezing from the bottom up where everything would die in the lake, mm -hmm. a right. lake freezes from, at the top and the water begins to turn over. Not only does that keep the fish and everything, the nutrients alive in the water, but that that's allows amazing. life to exist in the water. 
And that's a very special water, and it's uh, the diagram called a phase diagram. Mm -hmm. How water, what temperature and pressure water behaves when it becomes ice, when it becomes a gas, like steam, when it becomes a liquid. It has a very funny, very interesting phase diagram that allows <coughs> this to happen. It's, it's, uh, it stands out from a lot of the compounds that we normally see. And the, the liquid water, uh, it, uh, you know, that sort of uh, has the two hydrogens sitting over on one edge of it. And uh, then there's uh, uh, the orbits of the electrons that come around like this, and it forms a, a hydrogen bond. It uh, uh, actually connects with adjacent uh, water molecules. And it's the hydrogen bonds that actually makes what makes life work. Because yes. in, in the uh, compounds that have similar uh, oxygen uh, containing uh, compounds such as in, in amino acids. It's those uh, hydrogen bonds that connect uh, uh, the, like the enzymes together to, uh, it will connect to the water. It uh, it's, uh, makes it water affinitive. Yes, hydrogen is a very strong bond. And, very and strong so bond. what it does is it will bend and shape the, the, the enzyme into a um, uh, shape that will make it uh, active uh, in, in, the, in the body. And it's really fascinating to see how uh, you know, actually your the life will adjust uh, to uh, the certain different uh, uh, compounds that come into it and uh, break it down. And uh, it's really what makes up life is the chemistry of water. Yeah. But water, interestingly enough, though, if you listen to the Bible, what, I mean, Russ Humphreys, we've interviewer thinks that the things that everything was formed out of was real water. I mean, not just some liquid described as water, but it's like, so hydrogen and oxygen must have preceded that. I don't know, I'm just always fascinated with, because water's out of the waters and in the waters, that's right, the business that everything the was made. The word waters in the Bible, how yeah. you interpret that, it's a, little, it's a little out of scope of what I came to talk about. Right, but, so uh, we'll, we won't, but, yeah, we'll uh, go into a tangent. He has pointed <laughs> out something very interesting in water. Water has what's called a, a magnetic dipole moment. And water, like uh, uh, it, it behaves differently based on its own internal magnetism, and that is something that I don't think we fully understand how that works with the uh, the the way the water bonds. I, I don't think we fully understand mm -hmm. everything there is to know about water. So when the Bible says waters, what does that mean? Well, it certainly does mean water, regular water. But remember, in the Bible, they also talk about living water. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Christ Himself talks about different types of water. There's the type of water that you drink. That's for, it's called drinking water, then it's called the type of water that, that Christ gives, it's called living water. And that's what we're going to get from Christ. If you're saved and if you've received him as your personal savior, you're going to be able to drink of the living water. So that's a different type of water that, that I think that we're accustomed to as opposed to the water that we have to drink all the time. Now you were showing me uh, your uh, little diagram on your phone. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, you have a, he has an animation of... Uh, of, uh, now what I've come up with is, uh, as a numbers type of guy, when I read through, whenever I've read through the Bible, um, certain number patterns stand out to me. And uh, when I went through uh, university, um, I learned a whole bunch of num number patterns. As you can know, chemistry classes, phys cl physics classes, so you learn to recognize patterns. And I recognize a certain pattern in the periodic table. And then uh, I also recognize the pattern that's made by a certain function. It's called the exponential function. When you say something grows exponentially, that's an actual math function that's based upon a constant called E. You know, like we had National Pi Day, Pi mm -hmm. 3.14159. Yeah. There's also another constant called E, which is 3.71, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's another fundamental constant that exists. Well, the periodic table follows that constant. The first few, uh, the first few um, periods of it follow that, makes a pattern. Well, I know how to make that pattern using a, uh, a sequence of divisions of numbers, starting with the number one, two, three, just like we see on the periodic table, and creating that, that, uh, that pattern, it creates a spiral pattern. And it, that the spiral pattern, if you let it go, you can go, let it go seven times, it creates a pattern of numbers that, that fall, that, that creates another pattern when the pattern crosses the 180 degree mark of your circle or your 360 degree mark of your circle. So what, the way I interpret that, the way I bring this to the, the show here today is God said he created 
the universe, the, year, the, the earth in seven days. And we think to ourselves, wow, seven days, that's not very long time to create an entire planet and stuff like that. Well, what my spiral can show, and we can show, put up the spiral graphic, is that as the, the pattern goes in the spiral fashion and crosses the midpoints, you could call the one half of the spiral where it goes above the, the, the middle line, we could call that night, and we can call the, lo the lower part day. So as it's going around and around, just like God may have when he was creating the earth, as he says, day one this happened, day two happened, you can see that as the, the, the spiral is in the smaller circle, it's, it's like numbers one, two, three, because the Bible says the, the creation was brought out in, in, in sequence. And the sequence has a sum. How great is the sum of the sequence that the way of creation was brought out? And God also used, in another passage, God used a compass. So that's where I bring in on my spiral. I bring in zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees. So whenever, when the spiral, as it's coming around, reaches and crosses the 180 degree point, what that means is going from night to day. So my, my point in all this is to say, we can interpret the seven days of creation as seven rotations of creation while God was creating. It's mm -hmm. seven rotations because it's earth he's creating, he's making moving in a circular pattern, and he's making the completion of that pattern after the seventh pass. Each, each time he passes that middle line, if you look at the number and you put it into a table and you tabulate it, every time he passes, the first time around you write the numbers that, that we hit when we hit the, the uh, middle line of the table. If you tabulate all those numbers, those numbers actually concur with the, spirit, the periodic table but what's even more interesting is earlier we were talking about Fibonacci numbers. Yeah, this, pattern, that. this pattern creates the Fibonacci, Fibonacci series with a 99.5% um, concurrence with the actual Fibonacci Can series. Can you uh, explain what the, the Fibonacci series might be, how you calculate that? Well, how you actually calculate it is if every time the spiral passes the middle point line, you write down that number. And then when it passes, when it goes back around and passes the next, you take this number and you subtract this number. That's the Fibonacci number. Put it aside. And you keep doing those subtractions. Doesn't it like turn it into like a spiral? Or it something? is. It's exactly it. It's a yeah. spiral. Okay. It's seven rotations of a spiral, seven rotations of creation. While, and the numbers that, that that brings out concurs with the periodic table. No, last week and we were, we were playing with our fillery seeds. Yes. And uh, there is just uh, so many different uh, uh, examples within uh, nature that uh, sh show the Fibonacci uh, series. And uh, the fillery seed is one of them. Is, 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 a, is one of them. It's a, a, a spiral uh, seed that sort of screws itself in the ground. Uh, uh, and uh, we were just uh, commenting how how much that follows. My, my favorite one is the sunflower. Now, you predictably, you know, I've looked at several pictures of sunflowers, <coughs> several real sunflowers. You're going to have sunflowers, most sunflowers that I see have uh, 34 spirals one way and 55 spirals the other way. Okay. Okay, they, you what? count them, you count them, and th that's how many mm -hmm. you'll count. If you have a smaller sunflower, you're going to have 21 spirals one way and 34 spirals the other way. Okay. You can't have more because the pe it won't fit, it doesn't fit. Now, what's one thing that a lot of people don't know about Fibonacci numbers is they self-check themselves. Meaning, the, the, if you take three Fibonacci numbers in the series, if you take the middle Fibonacci number and you square it, and then you divide it by the first Fibonacci number, you'll get the second Fibonacci number minus one. So they all are like that. doesn't matter where really? you go. Wow. And if it doesn't work, it's not Fibonacci. And it's not that special series it's, it's called a convergent series, mm -hmm. but it's a very special convergent series because if those numbers don't fall on the line, it doesn't converge. It, that means it doesn't work. The function doesn't work anymore, it falls apart. And that's why creation, it's very important that the creation was brought out by number in the way that it was, because all the elements have to fit. All the numbers have to fit. If there's anything out of place, it falls apart. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what makes up the chemistry of, of an atom. Uh, and how it fits in with uh, what you're talking about. There's well, protons and neutrons and uh, electrons. electrons. Yes. 
Well, when we're talking chemistry, all the chemistry is done via electrons. And the electrons is what those, uh, what we say is orbit. They orbit outside of a very, very small center every atom has, which is called the nucleus. And that nucleus has protons right. and neutrons. Now, the neutrons kind of keep the stability of everything together, while the protons create a, a, an attractive charge, which allows, that keeps the electrons close to the center. You want to keep the electrons close, just kind of like the moon orbits the Earth. The Earth's kind of like a nucleus, and if you want to look at the moon, it's kind of like a single mm -hmm. electron. Hydrogen's the same way. Hydrogen's going to have a proton in the middle, and it's going to have, and it, since it has charge, positive charge, the oppositely charged electron wants to stay close. There's no way to make an electron get closer than, than it's supposed Actually, to. Actually, it does. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. called different energy levels. There's a lowest energy level. There's no such thing as a zero energy level in science. It's the closest energy level that if you add photons, if you add light, to the atom, to the hydrogen atom, you add the right amount of light, that electron jumps up a level. It goes a little mm -hmm. bit tiny really? farther away. Okay. This energy changes. Yes. And uh, the, it's these different levels of, en of uh, energy that uh, you know, fills these shells of, uh, yeah. of yes. uh, electrons. And, and the first the shell only contains two of them. And that's why you get yes. the hydrogen and helium is then that first level. Right. But the, the second level you have, uh, I think, is eight. Uh, in that uh, level, and so uh, it goes from uh, one through seven, and when you get the uh, the shell full, you've got eight, and then you go to the next yep. shell, which is a, uh, I, I believe that's another eight. Did you know that there's examples in the Bible of that very thing that you're talking about? The S shell, the two electrons that go into the S shell, and then on the second period, you bring in what's called the P shell, that has six more, so you're right, it's eight. There's eight elements, or eight electrons. So That's actually shown, there's an example that the Bible, you look at Herod's temple, the steps going up into Herod's temple, there's a, there, if you go from the, what's called the, uh, the uh, it's slipping my mind The outer here. court, or what? The outer court, but it's called the, uh, the Gentile. Yeah, that's the outer court. That's the, the Gentile, Gentile outer court. Yeah. If mm -hmm. you go into the sacred area, it's, it's uh, two steps, or two cubits. It's not mm -hmm. two steps, it's, it's two cubits. Okay. Which represents, well, I'll say that in my, in my theory, it represents the, the first two, the S shell of, a, of an atom holds two electrons. Okay, so then the next and then the, the next step, eight? Well, the next is to six cubits. When you go from the sacred level to the women's court, okay. that's six cubits. I think I'm getting the order right. Let me, let me make sure here that I'm getting the order right here. Because this is something I've, I've, going back through my studies, yeah. So what we have is period one. For, so this is where all you have on the top of the periodic table is just two elements. Okay. So you have room, you have occupancies for two electrons. One electron, two electrons. Then you go okay. to the next guy. Then you have another S, S orbital, two more electrons. So from, to go from the Gentile level to the sacred level is two, two cubits. And then from... Second level to women is two cubits. Two cubits. So you have one, two cubits. Then you have one, two cubits. And then the next, going from the women level to the Israel level, so what if, is okay. six cubits. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now the reason you may say, well, you just pulled this out of the Bible somewhere. Well, remember the Paul verse that says, Know ye not that you're a temple of God, that your body is a temple? Okay. What do you mean a, temple, a temple is a structure that is the same as... Our, it's a physical structure. Our bodies are a physical structure. Mm -hmm. And you find out elsewhere in the Bible that, did you, here's another thing too, did you know that your, the number of bones in our body, we have, uh, well, it depends on if you're a child or if you're an adult, but average 206 bones in your body. 82 of them are axial, part of your, called the axial skeleton. 126 of them are what's called the appendicular skeleton. And that's the same pattern as the lead atom, which is another atom on the periodic table. So the, the, the temple being the same as the body, as that we already know, the temple has numerical structure to it that concurs with the periodic table. Does it go, does it, well, so what, does it keep going down? I mean, this temple thing, does it keep going? Does yeah, it, let's continue on. I mean, okay, so we're right now we're period two, so we've gone one, two, two cubits, one, two cubits, then six cubits. So we're at the Israel level, court of Israel. Next. Court of Israel to the court of priests is two cubits. So now we're here, one, two. And then from the court of priests to the house of God is another six cubits. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. And so it uh, represents all the stable, stable elements of uh, uh, the first uh, few, uh, period. Yeah. Of, uh, uh, but that's what we'll say. That I was looking, looking at this reference about reading about the temple, uh, Herod's temple, which is also uh, very similar to Solomon's temple, and this number pattern jumped out at me. I was going two, so two, six, six, two, six. When you get all the long one. Yeah. Now the next, there's another pattern that's similar. It's called the laver pattern, and the laver had a special three. A laver is a bowl that holds water. Laver, yeah, very yeah. large. It's where they yeah. wash the sacrifice. Before they, and that's, uh, that, they that labor is that's the one that everybody, everybody yeah. washes, mm -hmm. right? Okay. But this labor pattern, if you start at the top, um, this labor pattern is uh, is uh, uh, ten. Yeah, it's, it's no, it's I gotta remember the, the it's thirty cubits or it's ten cubits around. Yeah. Let, right. me, let me make that make sure I'm right on that. On yeah, that that's the, that's the same thing where the. Uh, I had I'm a sorry. Controversy it's about ten pie. cubits about across. Pie, exactly. It's yes. It's pi. It's ten cubits across, meaning it's pi. You use pi three point one four one, thirty cubits around. So you have two bands. The top band is thirty cubits, which corresponds to. Um, it's just like the periodic table. It corresponds to what's called there. There are six or there's five p uh, p orbitals. Each p orbital is the six group here. So there's five of these, one, two, three, four, five, among the natural occurring. These are not naturally occurring here. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about that, but so that I adds up to 30. Out of time. The P orbitals and the D orbitals. Yes, and they keep then going, but, uh, you have the D orbitals that you have another 30 total elements. You have three D orbitals here, which are among the natural occurring stable elements. Okay. That's, the, that's the second 30. And then so below the two bands, you have the top 30 band, the second 30 band, you have 12 bulls that, that form the base of the labor. And that corresponds to these six, one, this will be one, two, you know, three, four, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, a number of 12 of the six pairs or 12 of the S orbitals. So that this labor pattern shows the s orbitals all the way down to the six periods of s orbitals six days there's periods of d orbitals or the three d orbitals and it shows five the five p orbitals that comprise the six series so, many, and so there's three different orbitals you named, named right now wow we're gonna have to do another show doug because we're running out of time <laughs> well, we're, we're, all, all we're, time. we're totally out so this is uh, just uh, getting into the, the beginning of uh, explaining this. We'll see you next time on Revolution Against Evolution.